All right, let's start uh, creating our viscous fluid sim when using Bifrost in Maya 2017. First of all, I'm going to select an emitter, and this is going to actually be producing the liquid in the scene. So I'm just going to draw this out quite small on the grid and drag it up. And I'm going to pause here because I just want to make a note about scale when using Bifrost for your fluid sims. Uh, you, you may have your units set to centimeters, and so if you don't know what I'm talking about, down in our preferences, we have our settings, and under working units, you can see that the linear unit is set to the centimeter. This is great if you're doing visualization a lot of the time, but in this case, you'll want to be aware of it, particularly using Bifrost, because Bifrost does not observe this unit uh, here. It actually works by its own unit, so we can have it set to centimeter here, but if we actually have a box, for instance, that is one unit by one unit by one unit, or close to that, I will uh, just change this back to one by one by one. This is being interpreted as one meter by one meter by one meter to Bifrost. So we just need to be aware of that. I'm actually going to be building a very large candy bar. So I'm going to have a box that's emitting chocolate that's 0.3 meters. So this is 30 centimeters, this box. We need to think of it that way. And this is going to be my fluid emitter or my chocolate emitter. So next of all, I'm going to go create my chocolate bar. And this is a big chocolate bar, almost the, the size of a person. Uh, let's see, 2.2, this is like a basketballer. Huge. All right, 1.5. That's it. A little more reasonable. Now you can go and uh, tweak this. Let's see, so that it was uh, a little more reasonable. But that's maybe something for a later date. Okay, we've got our chocolate emitter. Let's bring that down a little closer. We've got our, our chocolate bar. It's maybe just peanuts at this stage. And we'd like to uh, emit this, this hot chocolate onto our delicious candy bar. So first things first, going to grab that emitter. Now I want to go up to Bifrost up here. I just have to change my menu set from modeling to effects. Going to go over to Bifrost and make sure you have your emitter selected, your emitter geometry. Choose Bifrost create liquid. Okay, that'll create a Bifrost liquid system that's going to be associated with this object. And we can we can grab that quite easily by clicking on the box. And there are a number of other nodes here that are associated with this system. So first off, let's just go ahead and uh, go to the beginning of our timeline. Always make sure you go to the beginning of the timeline if you want to see how your Bifrost simulation is playing. And you haven't created a cache yet. And you can see that nothing appears to be happening. Well, the reason for this is that Bifrost is very scale dependent. And as you uh, know, this is actually quite a small box, uh, maybe in, in our mind at 30 centimeters. But Bifrost actually simulates through what's called a voxel volume. So I'm just going to go to my Bifrost liquid properties, press Control-A on the keyboard to bring up my attribute editor. And down under the Bifrost liquid properties container, you can see that the resolution master voxel size is set to 0.5 units or half a meter. And so basically the simulation grid that we're running our particles through are very big. So I'm going to drop that down so that is 0.05 or 5 centimeters. Now we can see some particles. And if I go ahead and simulate those, you'll see them dropping down. That's lovely. All right, I'm going to stop that either clicking on the stop or pressing escape. Run back to the beginning of the simulation and clicking this button here. And what I want to do now is make sure that this is emitting continuously. All right. But just before I do that, all I'm going to do is select this cube, right, this emitter cube. And this is going to be the start position. So I'm going to press S on the keyboard to set a keyframe and record it there. I'm going to run to frame 50. And I'm actually going to rotate this as well, maybe so it's a little more interesting. Let's see. So it's just kind of tumbling as it pr produces the liquid. All right, now. I said tumbling as it produces the liquid. You can see that it just has that initial volume of liquid. Let's change that so that it's continuously emitting the liquid over the course of the animation. So I'm going to select my Bifrost emitter props. And over here, make sure I choose my emitter props node. And you can see under properties, we have continuous emission. I'll check that on. If I go back and play this now, I should see that the liquid is being continuously produced. Okay, that's great, except that I've got a trail running off into infinity, falling into a great abyss. Let's run back to the beginning of time and create a collider. Now, what I'm going to do is actually create what's called a kill plane. So any of the fluids that fall off, they aren't going to be computed anymore once they hit this kill plane. 
If I wanted to see it, I could create a collision geometry down here, but I'll leave that. So I'll go to Bifrost, and whoops, I need to have my actual Bifrost system selected. Bifrost, and kill plane. You'll see it creates this plane on the ground, and that's just going to kill any of these uh, Bifrost particles once they actually collide with it. All right, so if we play that back, let's see what the difference is. All right, you can see that I uh, don't need to actually have that scaled up to be particularly large. It just has to actually pass onto that axis, right, on the y-axis, and it just kills those particles straight away. Great. Run back to the beginning of the animation. You know, get in a little bit closer here and see where we're at. So that's that's looking good, right? We've got our kill plane, but now we need to have this actual fluid collide with this chocolate bar, this peanut bar. I'm going to grab my fluid, hold shift, click on the peanut bar, and go to Bifrost, add collider. All right, that will associate this geometry as a collider with this Bifrost fluid system. Run back to the beginning, press play, and if this is at all predictable, which it is, we get our fluid colliding with the actual chocolate bar. All right, lovely. Now the only thing is it's looking a little bit like water. I'm going to run back and increase the viscosity of this fluid. So I'll go to my Bifrost liquid properties, and scrolling down, I'm going to come down to viscosity. Open that up, and I'm going to go for a very high viscosity of about 400. Take that back to the beginning. Let's see how that's playing. Now, when you get to the final one, you'll want to do a higher quality simulation. So you want to drop the mass to voxel size again, and actually go and produce a cache so that you can record this actual simulation and not have to re-simulate it every time, because it'll get very time consuming. All right, that's looking like nice gooey chocolate for now. I, you'll notice that I only really have these particles and I don't have a mesh. So what we need to do is go ahead and grab our liquid here from the outliner, scroll down, and we should have an option for Bifrost meshing. Tick that on to enable it, and that'll create a mesh based on those particles that have been simulated through the voxel grid. Run back to the beginning of time, just start simulating that, and that's great, but uh, I'd like to change the actual material. I don't want to do water here. So I'm just going to hold that up by clicking the stop button. I'm going to click on the material. You'll see the actual mesh wireframe. Right click and hold. Choose material attributes. And you can see that we've got our Bifrost liquid material. I'm actually using my 2017. So I've got access to Arnold. So I'm going to switch this type over to an AI standard. And once I have that, I'll say, all right. I want the diffuse color to be chocolatey looking. Yes, that's um, it's quite chocolatey and it needs to be nice and shiny. So I'll give it some specular weighting and maybe drop the uh, roughness down. Okay, back to the beginning of time. And that's just going to give us our delicious melted chocolate on our candy bar. All right, now with that done, you may want to go ahead and simulate some more at a, at a higher voxel density. Speaking of turning down the size of the voxels, that's what I've gone and done here for this simulation. And I've also refined the shader a little bit. So if you'd like to grab this file, jump on over to the link that's in the description. That's it for now. See you next time.